guys, Mr. Klein here with our first of two lessons in our chapter on science and the environment. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about types of resources, mainly in with regards to uh, creation of power consumption and power plants and stuff like that. And in our second lesson, we're going to talk about how we can conserve natural resources. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Of course, natural resources, flowing water. We can use flowing water for a whole lot of things. We could drink it if it's thirsty, but only after you like take all the parasites and stuff out of it because you don't want to get sick by drinking water in a random stream. But we can also use this to generate power. And in places in the United States and around the world, moving water is a source of electricity. And But more importantly, water itself is a natural resource. And, you know, you might be asking yourself, what are natural resources? Well, you know, you can't live without your phone. How else can you message your friends and you can like their selfies on social media? But where did that phone come from? You might say, well, the store, Mr. Klein, come on. Ah, oh, but you might be a little more clever and say a factory. But where did the individual components come from? Okay, they might have come from the factories, but where did they get the factory get the stuff from? And what about the energy needed to power your phone? Where did the electricity come from when you charge it up the last time? The answer to all of these questions come from natural resources or anything that people use that comes from nature. Okay, anything from minerals to the sun to flowing water, food, everything uh, essentially boils down to natural resources. From the aluminum in your phone's case to the silicon and the microchips that power it to the coal, natural gas, or even nuclear power that powers the power plant that gives it electricity, everything we use comes from natural resources. Now, we mainly divide natural resources into two categories. Uh, renewable resources are the first one we're going to talk about. Renewable resources are natural resources that can be replaced easily or essentially have a limitless supply. Things like wind, running water, the sun, those are what we call inexhaustible resources because unless you're thinking about time scales uh, in, in astronomy where we took about billions of years, the sun, we're never going to run out of that energy. Okay. Now, because we can easily replace it or simply use as much as we need, renewable resources are seen of effect as an effective method of producing large amounts of clean energy for our world today. The reason why is because they produce little to no pollution. Okay. Now, like I said, they're clean because they produce little to no pollution when converting them to usable energy, but they do have some downsides to it. So let's go ahead and let's look into the types of renewable energy resources. There's several types. And I'm going to talk about them uh, one at a time. We're going to talk about the good things and the bad things to them. And so your graphic organizer is going to be a table for this. The first off is solar energy. Solar energy is, comes from the sun. Okay. Essentially, all of the energy needed for life on Earth comes from the sun. So in many ways, without the sun, we wouldn't have life on Earth. Uh, but solar energy can be used to create electricity with solar panels or even heating homes. Solar energy's biggest hurdles are the expense of creating solar panels. Those photoelectric cells, those dark colored cells, are still expensive to make. Uh, they're also not very efficient in terms of taking in sunlight and converting it to electricity. They're breaking even at about 30% maximum efficiency. And the fact that if it's cloudy outside, you kind of have trouble collecting solar energy. Okay, whenever we think of solar energy and solar plants, we talk about places like this. Now, as you can see, there's another problem with solar plants is they take up a whole lot of real estate. Okay, now, uh, if you have solar chargers in places on like roofs of buildings, that's one thing. But if you're taking out all of this land out in the open, that is a downside to solar energy. So let's go ahead and let's create our organizer. Okay, solar energy is a renewable source of energy. Essentially, the panels turn sunlight into electricity. A great thing is we're never going to run out of sunlight, but the disadvantage, of course, is you can only really get power when the sun is out. So go ahead and get that down. Make sure you put enough blanks for all the stuff we're going to be talking about. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's move on. Wind energy is energy that comes from, well, the wind. Okay, large devices called wind turbines can spin in the wind to create electricity. It converts the uh, wind energy converts to mechanical energy, which then converts to electrical energy that creates uh, electricity for us to use in our homes. Now, it's really great because there's essentially no pollution because you just prop up a turbine and it spins, 
But there are some downsides to wind turbines and wind farms. Uh, first off, wind turbines can kill birds. Uh, there's things having to do with the fact that these big, huge wind turbines, which are over 100 meters tall, birds can fly into them. They create frequency issues. Uh, not all areas have enough steady winds in order to have reliable wind power. Also, people think they're ugly and things of that nature. Okay, so whenever we talk about wind turbines and we talk about wind farms, we talk about these things, and they are really big. They're about the size of a football field, and that's not counting the blades. That's just the pole itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add wind energy. It's renewable. Turbines spin in the wind to create electricity. Of course, we'll never run out of wind, so as long as we can keep the wind turbines moving, we'll be able to have electricity, but it's only effective if it's always windy. Now, the middle portion of North America from North Dakota down to uh, Texas is really good for wind turbines. Where we're at in South Louisiana, it's a little bit iffy. If you go off, uh, off the coast and you get a little bit into the Gulf of Mexico, it gets really good uh, constant steady winds for that, but the downside to that would be hurricanes that you have to deal with. Okay, so here's some more types of renewable energy. Energy can be created through moving water through hydroelectric dams. The dams hold back the water and channel it through tunnels, uh, which convert the moving water with a turbine through electricity. Issues with hydroelectric power include that not all rivers can be dammed effectively. I mean, you have to have like a difference in height. Uh, in fact, Louisiana, we only have two hydroelectric dams. Uh, one at Toledo Bend and the other one at the uh, Three Rivers area where the Red River, the Atchafalaya, and Mississippi River meet. Uh, and, not all, and also, no matter what happens, uh, ecosystems both upstream and downstream or a dam are altered by its construction, okay? oftentimes for the negative. So this is how a hydroelectric dam works. So you have the dam, which creates the head pond. The waters go through the side, and they spin the turbine, and they go out. And the generator turns that turbine's mechanical energy into electricity. Okay, so let's create hydroelectric. Turn running water spins turbines to create electricity. We'll never run out of running water as long as there's gravity and as long as there's liquid water. We're going to have hydroelectric power available. Okay, and dams change river ecosystems as a disadvantage. Okay, so finally, we're going to talk about in terms of renewable energy, we'll talk about geothermal energy. Uh, it's kind of one of my favorites. It's the use of heat below Earth's surface to create electricity or even to warm homes. Uh, unlike other sources of energy, there's little to no pollution or even impact on the environment. Geothermal plants, you just kind of have the building and the cooling tower, and that's it. Uh, the problems are twofold. One, geothermal plants are very expensive to build because you have to drill down to where uh, below in the Earth's crust where it's hot enough to run the pipes and flow the water. And you also have, you know, it has to be hot enough below the Earth's surface. We got to talk about temperatures above boiling in order for it to work. And this is kind of how a geothermal power plant works. Uh, you could either suck up hot water uh, from underneath or you connect these pipes the hot water turns into steam, which turns a turbine, which turns a generator. The hot water goes to a cooling tower. It's exposed to the atmosphere, the, the water itself is in the pipes. They cool down, and so the steam, what you see rising up, uh, might be you might think is smoke, but it's just water vapor. And then it cools down and goes down into the injection well, where the whole cycle starts up. You can have these for houses for heating or in places where they have a lot of geothermal activity. Uh, you have these power plants. Okay, heat from the earth boils water to create electricity. There's zero pollution, uh, but very few places on earth can support it. Essentially, where there's volcanoes and volcanic activity, that's where you can have geothermal energy, which down here in South Louisiana, we don't have volcanoes or anything like that, so we can't have them. Now, let's talk about non-renewable resources. Non-renewable resources are natural resources that are limited in supply and cannot be easily replaced. In other words, once we're done with them, we don't have any more and we can't really replace them. So it's important that their supplies are managed properly to ensure that we can use them as long as we can. Okay. And the thing to know about non-renewable energy resources, that's where we get most of our energy from. Uh, we don't get them from clean energy. We rather get them from non-renewable resources uh, called fossil fuels. And the reason why we use them is because the energy and their chemical bonds are very efficient in creating their energy. Plus, they have a whole lot of energy packed in there. If you think about a car, you can load the, you know, 
15 to 20 liters of, uh, I'm sorry, 20 to 30 liters of gasoline into a car, uh, that provides, you know, you know, seven, 800 kilometers, for instance, for your car to travel. Well, that's a whole lot of distance you get out of a little bit of energy. Okay. Now today we generally use two types of non-renewable energy resources. First off, fossil fuels, like I said, are the remains of dead plants and animal materials formed over millions of years. As a result, we they're considered non-renewable because it takes so long to replenish them. Fossil fuels, like I said, are the most common forms of natural resources used for energy. There's three main types of fossil fuels used, and we're going to look at each of them here. First off is coal. Coal is formed when plant matter is compressed beneath layers of rock. Okay, it burns really easily and is used to create electricity in power plants. A uh, uh, hundred years ago, it was like the main source of energy. In the United States, it's still the predominant form of energy and uh, creation for power plants in certain places, but in other places, it isn't used. However, burning coal creates large amounts of pollution, and mining coal can also result in environmental damage. In fact, one of the problems with coal is that in places in the eastern United States, they would just blow up the top of a mountain in order to get to the coal. So you're like leveling mountains in order to get it. Okay, this is coal. It kind of looks like rocks, but it kind of has a sooty feel. And just for the record, uh, that charcoal that your parents use in order to barbecue that is not coal. It's kind of the same process, but charcoal is just compressed wood and it, uh, under heat and it kind of chars up. Uh, this, this is performed through a different process. Okay. So coal is non-renewable. It's fossilized plant material, burns really easily, lots of stored energy, but it creates a lot of pollution. After that is petroleum. It's a liquid, it's oil. Okay created by animal matter compressed beneath layers of rock, okay? Where we're at in South Louisiana, the oil and gas industry is really, really important. In fact, a lot of your parents probably work either for an oil field company or they work for a company that works for an oil field company. Um, it burns really easily, and whenever we refine it or we work on it and we distill and we take out impurities, we can make all sorts of substances. Cosmetics, plastics, gasoline, diesel, motor oil, all of that stuff. When it's burned, petroleum creates carbon dioxide, which scientists believe may be one of the main drivers of climate change. Okay, And this is how we actually drill for oil. Offshore, it's, you have a rig above the ocean, but the same process happens. You have the drilling rig, which drills through the Earth's crust. And what happens is oil gets caught in pockets between uh, types of rock. And so the drilling rig does is it drills down to the petroleum and pumps it out of the ground. And usually next to petroleum, we have natural gas, which we'll talk about in the next section. Okay, and so it's pumped out, sent to a refinery, it's refined, so on and so forth. Okay, it's the liquefied remains of marine animals. Petroleum, of course, is a non renewable energy source, burns easily, lots of stored energy uh, uh, for use, but it creates pollution. And the final one is natural gas, it's a byproduct of the creation of petroleum, and it's found in pockets beside petroleum deposits. Originally, it was thought to be waste from petroleum, and they would actually burn it off. But then uh, scientists realized that we could use it for clean energy. And natural gas aren't burns a whole lot cleaner than petroleum and way more clean than coal. And so as a result, it's being used more and more in power plants because it burns so clean. Now, just because it burns clean compared to these other fossil fuels doesn't mean it's like renewable sources of energy where there's very little to no pollution. Okay, it still releases carbon dioxide. So as a result, it still releases greenhouse gases. Okay, and when we think of natural gas, that's what we're thinking of. If you have a gas stove or something like that, that blue flame is natural gas. So, non-renewable, it's formed by the creation of petroleum, burns easily, it's the cleanest fossil fuel, but of course it still creates pollution. All right, finally, we have nuclear power plants, which is the other type of uh, non-renewable resource we're going to talk about. Nuclear power plants use radioactive elements such as uranium in order to heat water and power turbines. Uranium atoms break apart in a process what we call nuclear fission. Fission means breaking apart. And as the elements break apart, they release heat. Okay. Nuclear power is useful because the amount of energy released is huge in comparison to the amount of uranium. Okay, so these little pellets or these fuel rods release a whole lot of energy. And we're going to talk about the process, how it's made in a second. Uh, it's clean because it doesn't create carbon dioxide. Like uh, geothermal plants, it has those big cooling towers. All it's releasing is water vapor. 
Uh, but the waste it creates, once the uranium is used up, it's highly radioactive and it can be potentially radioactive for thousands of years. And it has to be stored properly, which is a big issue. The other issue with nuclear power is that nuclear accidents can happen, like in Fukushima after the earthquake and tsunami in 2011, and in Ukraine at Chernobyl in uh, 1986, and in 1970s at Three Mile Island in the United States, you had these uh, you had these nuclear accidents, which either in the case of Three Mile Island had a really limited release of radioactivity. Chernobyl made an area completely uninhabitable. Uh, for even 30 years on, still in uninhabitable. And Fukushima in 2011, we have an area that's uninhabitable and we don't know for how long. Okay, so this is how a nuclear power plant works. Inside you see the green, it's uranium fuel. And they have what are called control rods, which control how much it's put in. And you have a pressurized steam, okay? And the water, what it does is the fuel rods are put into the water the fuel rods turn or fuel rods release heat the heat, water turns into steam which then turns a turbine okay because this water is directly exposed to the radioactive material it's sealed and it's kept okay so it isn't that way it isn't released uh, and what you do is you have a second set of water, which comes from a cool water source. Uh, the closest nuclear power plant to where we're at in South Louisiana is north of Baton Rouge at Riverbend. And what they do is they actually use water from the Mississippi River. And what happens is the steam lines, uh, these pipes go into these condensers, which water from the Mississippi River passes over the pipes. And these pipes are shielded in, in order for the uh, radioactivity to not, uh, not contaminate the water which then it cools it off and it goes off the water vapor and so on and so forth. And if you notice, a lot of these clean energy sources revolve around turbines and steam. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's wrap this up. I know this was a really long lesson, but we were talking about a whole lot of stuff, as you can see by this huge graphic organizer. Nuclear power is non-renewable. Heat energy from radioactive elements is turned into electricity. It's pollution-free, lots of stored energy for the fuel rods, but the waste is very dangerous for a whole lot of time, and there's also a risk of accidents with long-term consequences. So we're talking about two types of energy uh, the resources here. Uh, renewable and non-renewable. Solar, wind, hydroelectric, and geothermal are renewable, which means that we can just keep on using them. Coal, petroleum, and natural gas are fossil fuels, and nuclear power as a result of uranium is considered a non-renewable resource, which means once we're out of it, we're out of it. All of them have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, renewable energy's problems involve actually gathering up enough energy to use it. Non-renewables issue has to do with pollution, and so there's pluses and minuses to each of them. And as we go through the coming years and coming decades, we have to struggle with this. So there you go. That's your lesson. I know it's really, really long. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching.